Well, welcome back to the Fearless Future podcast. I'm your host, Glenn Schwarm, here with my beautiful bride and business partner. Amber Schwarm. And we are thrilled to have you here today. Today, we're going to talk about squatters and how they are affecting the real estate investing market and even not the investing market and how it could really affect you by just stealing your house from you. So to start off today, we're going to watch a video that Amber and I have not seen yet, and it's about squatters and what they're doing. And I can tell you this, Amber and I have tremendous amounts of experience with people that have squatted in our houses over the years. What a wonderful name, squatter. Perfect <laughs> name for them, right? Yeah. So anyway, let's watch this video and then we'll talk about it. A growing problem in the city and a nightmare for landlords, squatters, who take advantage of laws that allow them to live rent-free as the lengthy court process plays out. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer here in studio with an issue in desperate need of a solution, Marsha. Well, Christine, you're right. You know, I recently had a conversation with a friend whose mother died leaving her a house in Queens. Now, it should have been an easy sell, the house and the bank and the bank inheritance, but it wasn't. She was terrified squatters would see an empty house, move in, and she wouldn't be able to get them out. And she's not alone. Squatters have victimized many, many New Yorkers who say something just has to be done. My tenants only pay me one month's name. They know the game. They know after 30 days, you cannot evict them. No court case should go seven years. Why can't you just change the locks? Oh, I will be arrested instantly. They turned off the hot water and then reported that they had no hot water. It's a $250 fine per day, up to $15,000, punishable by five years in jail. So here you are, you have to pay the upkeep of the house. Right, I pay the And you're not getting any rent? I'm not getting any rent, and I'm paying the uh, gas and electric every month. Four stories repeated over and over and over again by irate and often unwitting property owners. Worry lines marking their faces, who came to see Councilwoman Vicki Palladino's office desperately seeking help. Hong Chen has spent thousands trying unsuccessfully to get the squatters out of this home in Mazpath. John Sokran using his pension money for expenses on this College Point home he hoped would provide retirement income. And Susan Mascara, who has used up her savings paying for seven years of upkeep on this Bayside home she inherited from her mother. I'm in debt. My credit cards are pretty much maxed out. Some of them make me cry. All I want to do is make things better. Councilwoman Vicki Palladino says part of the solution is to change the law, which allows people to claim squatters' rights after living in a place for 30 days. She wants it changed to 180 days. They own the property and they have no rights. Squatter rights, oxymoron. Squatters have no rights. Squatters terrified this woman who lived next door to this Whitestone home, a home they took possession of. 7.30 in the morning, there'd be people on the front lawn drinking beer, smoking pot. Different cars from different states showing up and then license plates being swapped. It was frightening. Marcia, you can feel the desperation from these homeowners, but this was focused, you know, the residents in Queens, but it's not specified to this borough, is it? No, it's, it's really citywide, and it's all five boroughs, not just the Queens or the outer boroughs. It's Manhattan as well. And it's people who own apartments, people who own houses, people who are snowbirds who are afraid to go to their vacation homes because if they leave their house untended, somebody could break in. And it also involves retirees who are afraid that their investment income might not come through. Well, you were right. Something needs to be done here, Marcia. Thank you for that. I don't know about you, but that pisses me off. Yeah. I mean, in what infinite wisdom did somebody give squatters rights? Um, far left that's cities insane. and communities. I mean, the, that's exactly what's going on right now. The far left, that, that's the kind of policy. We lived in New York for years. We know. I mean, the, the tenants get all the rights. Squatters get all the rights. People that are not supposed to be here get all the rights, and the people that do illegal things get all the rights. But law-abiding citizens, we get screwed, and property owners. It's it's horrible. And I I know it just pisses me off beyond belief when I hear that, because I think about all the experience we've had over the years with yeah. squatters. Now, we haven't ha we've had one that was horrible right. that we could not get out of the property for months on end and lost ten we lost what seventy thousand dollars is seventy thousand yeah. dollars. That Probably was north of that. And we, we have a whole podcast, if you've not seen that, on that. You can check that out yeah. right here. And I recommend the, that you go Airbnb watch it. The Airbnb guest from hell. <laughs> yeah. 
that stopped paying, so right. it became a squatter. Right. Again, came in, paid for a month or two, right. and then stopped paying because she knew the laws in New York. And she made it very clear. Yep. She knew the laws in New York. Yep. She said, I know the laws in New York, and you can't get me out. And it was like, oh. And she did similar stuff. Screw to, you. She you, did similar stuff to what we just uh, saw there. Like the people that turned off the hot water, she actually made the, like the the the, uh, the pump. The sewer. The sewer like overflow yeah, in the yard. So, and then okay, she let's had talk the about that. Come out so let's and, talk about that. So she- one of the things she did as a squatter was we have a what's called a grinder pump that goes into a septic. And it's kind of a unique situation on that house. And it has a red light on it that goes off if it gets well. They were flushing clothes down the toilet to clog it. And it wasn't a toilet. They didn't realize it was a toilet. So now it goes in this tank in the yard and the septic came up over the tank. And then they called the health department. Instead, right. of, instead of calling us, they called the health department. Right. When the health department gets involved, that's a major problem. This is, this is you know, everything was fine and dandy and she was very happy until we started the eviction process because she was trying to string us along and, and told us all sorts of lies and, and everything. So then once we started the eviction process, which also takes months, you know, that doesn't happen overnight in New York Oh, it's six, but it's six, it's six, ever since they, they put all the new laws after COVID and all the, all the equal rights and, and moratoriums yeah. and all, we can't be offensive to anybody, even if they don't pay rent. We don't want to offend anybody after all, because yeah. by God, if they just can't afford it, then you, the big bad landlord, should have to pay all yeah. your bills. I, here's the part that I don't get. And I want to go back to that story in a minute, but I don't get how if you are a property owner, the same government that tells you you can't evict the squatter will take your house from you if you don't pay the taxes. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah. And I have to pay my insurance. And if I provide utilities, I have to pay for the utilities also. Everything has to be taken care of. And if I don't take care of the squatter, the freaking squatter, <laughs> yeah. I can go to jail. Yeah. If I turn off Get power to the house. and go to jail. Let's be honest, because when this first started, we were trying to figure out what to do. And I remember saying to myself, can we like mail a box of bed bugs to them? Like Federal <laughs> Express, a box of bed bugs. Just so the house gets infested. The oh, yeah. We talked about can we go in the middle of the night and can we just put bees that go into it like a beehive <laughs> in the house and put the hose in there? And you know, what can we do? But the truth is, I'd be in prison. Yeah. Because I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy, even though they're stealing my house from me, literally stealing my house from me. They might as well pick it up and take it away. Yeah. It just pisses which, which she did. Like she did pick up all the contents and take she them did away. Steal everything. She that's a whole different yeah. that's a whole that was that was one instant. But to me, I, it makes absolutely no sense. It just it just freaking pisses me off so bad because it just does not make any sense at all. Regardless of where you are politically, though, like I, I can't imagine how anyone says that's just. How is that justice? Like, I, like how is that fair for the property owner? It's not. So, so where, where did this wisdom and this law come from that allows squatters to have rights? I, I, don't, I don't get that. I don't know. They vote. Maybe because they want to vote. Who's Again, voting? The squatters? I know. Right. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. Barely even have a car. So I, I mean, I just, are, are people in the power well, that dumb that they don't really know how the world works? And, you know, landlords, why, why do the landlords have such a bad name? They're, they're providing a house for someone that might not otherwise have one. So we're, we're providing homes for people. And the, the thing that makes me sad about even that video that we just saw are the the elderly people that have these investment properties and they're getting taken advantage of. And that's cutting into their retirement and they may only have a property or two and that's their whole income. So then you go and squat on those people and then fine them for, for you know, not keeping the power on or turning off the hot water or whatever. F find them, find them. You can go to jail. You can go to jail. That's for what, five years yeah. if you turn the power off to a house. And God knows I wanted to shut the power off in that <laughs> in our house. That <laughs> needed the power shut off in the worst way. Oh, she was awful. You needed her power shut off or water shut off, but you can't do that. Now, no. back in the 80s and 90s, you could do that and people would leave. Right. And honestly, that feels just to me. Right. But again, they have to have some kind of law because sometimes they might say, hey, you're late on rent. I'm going to shut the power off. So I'm going to guess things got extreme on the landlord side. So they went, they went far left to try and fix it. I, I can, the only thing I can realize is like, they must've said, okay, in New York city, if somebody owns a building with a thousand apartments in it and they become a slumlord, they're in Harlem, they're in Brooklyn and they become what well, that the term slumlord, I think came from like New York city apartments. Yeah. They just wouldn't do anything to make repairs. But so they said, we're going to start giving tenants rights. But I don't understand how you get a right when you don't pay for it. Right. Like, this doesn't make any sense 
Of course, we, of course, we also live in a country in these same kind of states, which I don't think this has quite hit New York yet, but in California, you can walk into a store and take whatever you want up yeah. to $900. Loot. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you take up to 900 bucks, that's cool. Yeah. Like, you're good with that. Yeah. Well, we can't we can't prosecute you because the law won't do anything. Are you out of your freaking mind? I don't even know what country we live in these days. So but then it's stores insanity. are actually shutting down and going out of business because of that. Right. Because they can't keep up with the theft. So like, you know, these people that create these insane laws, like in the long run, it's just going to hurt everybody. I think so. So I, I that's what I, get, I don't get. I don't get the concept of, of why these people are creating these things that are so polarizing. So let's move on because I could be here all day. It just pisses me off. I'm going to say I'm going to say pissed off like 10 more times <laughs> in this podcast, apparently, because I, I just cannot stand. Are you going to have to take your blood pressure after this? I may have to. So I, I just can't understand it. But to make it worse. How about the post we saw? Read the post that we saw. Oh, yeah. This is to add insult to injury. So this this is in the publica. So it says far left anti landlord activist launches address directory of empty properties for squatters to seize. So this guy is publicizing houses that are vacant so people can just go move into them. I mean, one of my main missions in life is to raise our kids to be positive, contributing members of society. How is that being a positive, contributing member to society? So the funny part is he thinks he is. He thinks he's providing free houses to people. He doesn't yeah. realize that people Who actually get, get hurt. And he thinks, well, you guys make lots of money. You're millionaires. You should he doesn't do that. Care. They don't care. They could care less. So. They, in his mind, in his warped mind, he thinks he's doing the right thing. That is so effed up. Oh, I think it's terrible. I think it's the worst thing in the world. And I, social media used to be such a great thing, didn't it? When, when social media first came out, I could see my friends, what they were doing. I've yeah. connected with friends that I never would have seen again, that I grew up with in high school and even my business associates I've gotten closer to. And there's been a lot of positives with social media. Sad part is we are now entering the phase where it's a lot more negative than positive when yeah. it comes to social media because they're manipulating data. They're manip- uh, now we'll go down that path, but it's they they're everything's nothing's true anymore on there. It's really hard to find, but it gives a platform to a guy like that who says, "Hey, let me help you steal houses." Yeah. That's essentially what he's doing. I-, I was just thinking the exact same word. Like, when did theft become acceptable? Whether it's looting stores or stealing people's houses, like when did theft become acceptable in our society? You know that this this could happen. Let's say that we had a house, which we do have a house in New York. We do have vacant houses in New York because they're Airbnbs, right? That we have some Airbnbs up there. Well, we Airbnbs, have rentals. and then when the houses, uh, what, the ones that we renovate, they're vacant for a certain Correct. amount of time while we're in the sales cycle. Well, we had a potential squatter there in that one I house. Know. We, so so we had a house that this was crazy. We had a house that was for sale, and it was closing. We're it gonna, was sold. Yes, it was sold. Going through the escrow closing process, we we're supposed to close on a Monday and on a Friday, we get a phone call that people have moved in. From the police, right? It was somebody, um, it was the police, it was a police officer that was verifying that you were the owner of the house or that we were the owner of the house. I don't know. I'm not, I have to think how it all happened. No, our project manager called us and said, someone's in the house and they've changed the locks. And we thought it was the new owner. They th- thought they moved in early because they were supposed to close on Monday. Okay, and move it was in. the police that talked to you later after we. Yes. Okay. And so, and I said, and he said, are they moved in? And we said, no. So we talked to our, op- our director of operations and she said, that's not them. We ca- I just called the lawyer and they, yeah. they didn't move in. And we're like, uh oh, somebody had moved in the house. So the doors were locked. And I actually have video footage of that. When they marched him out, they actually arrested the guy. At the door, thank God, they arrested him. Now, now we're in upstate New York. So they, they actually busted in the door lock. Correct. Because, to get in the house. Because we said that this is our house and someone's in there. Yes. Now, it, there was forced entry. They had moved everything in, including mounting their TVs on the right. wall. And on a fully finished, renovated house, right. they, they mounted everything on the wall, put all their furniture, made all the nicks and dents and dings when you move furniture in. They did all that. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did, yeah. But they did all that to the house. And- put all their uh, drapes up, everything. And then we found out they were living there. Now, that was, an, that was a con right. that they got con. Right. Tell them about that. Yeah. So what had happened is they responded to some ad on Craigslist or Facebook or something. So somebody had marketed our house for rent as if they were the landlord. But here's where it gets well, sketchy. Because they saw all the pictures online. Right. They saw all because the pictures it was for, sale. for sale. So they hacked right. all the pictures, made a for rent ad, and then right. do your, yeah. 
So, but here's where it gets sketchy. So the, the landlord, I'm doing air quotes here for those of you that aren't watching, um, told the people, the, the new renters, Hey, you know, we, you, ha you're going to have to bust the lock cause we don't have the key and you need to pay me in like gift cards uh, or like visa debit card, you know, prepaid, up, up prepaid front. credit cards yes. up front. Yeah. So, you know, that should have been a couple big red flags for a potential tenant, you know, like how dumb are you? Are you that you're going to fall for? Oh, you have to break into the house to rent it and you have to pay me in prepaid credit cards. Like, come on. Yeah, that's just that's just nonsense. But when they when they discovered and they showed that proof to the police, the police actually um, they asked us want to press charge. We said no. Thankfully, in the small towns in New York, we were still good. They did not allow them to to stake a claim in the house. Well, who, know, who knows if we hadn't noticed right away, though? Because we we noticed right away, like it was a, a matter of a couple of days that they'd only been there. Had they been there more than 30 days, we might have had a different conversation. That's 100% correct. We'd have been in- Even in a small town. They would have been a tenant. Right. They would have been considered a non-paying tenant, which you would have had to go through the eviction process. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you know this or not, but we bought a house. We were, we were going to wholesale a house last year. It's been, it's been over seven months now. We were going to wholesale a house last year. And right at the closing table- and again, for those of you who don't know, a wholesale is when you sell a contract to a house. So a contract to a house that we don't own yet. So we're going to sell that contract to another investor. And so there was a tenant in the house and he refused to move. And the cash buyers that we had lined up said, we don't want to buy it with a tenant in there. So it was such a good deal that we bought it. We pulled out cash and we said, we're going to buy the house. So we bought it. We said, we'll evict this guy and then we'll just resell the house later or, or renovate it or whatever we want to do to it. Well, do you know that that son of a gun will not move out? Still? He has been there for seven months now. The law, the shitty laws we have in upstate New York, they're going through the process. Our, I literally remember you talking about this with Meg like months ago. It's been going on for months. And so he will not move out. He will not answer anything. We offered him cash for keys, which means we offered him $2,000 or something like that to take just to leave, just yeah. get out. It was going to cost us more than that with legal fees. Right. So just get out. Wouldn't respond to that because he knows the law. He makes a lot more to stay than mm -hmm. he does to go. And he said that. I mean, I don't know if he said that. No, he just totally ignored us. But he knows he makes more to stay. So he did not move. And last, last he said he was supposed to show up in court about a month ago. And he said, oh, I already paid for six months in advance. Now, the guy's a total loser. And he's like, I paid for six months in advance and I paid. The landlord was his ex-wife mm -hmm. and he's had a signed document. Well, it's not her signature. We have her signature on all the documents because we bought the house from her. Yeah. Not her, not her signature. So he forged it. Took it to court and said, we, he forged this. Well, we had to have somebody come try and prove that it was forged and they can't prove it. And they said, even still, even still, if we could prove that was a forgery, they're not sure he didn't actually give rent. And then our problem is with the person we sold the house to, not him. Even though he presented a forged document, the, the judge said, yeah, I don't care. Little Jimmy needs to stay in the house or whatever the hell they said about him. They, and so they let him stay. He's still in the house and we can't get him out. And we don't understand for the life of us why he's not paying rent. He says he pays rent. And it's like, you said it? Okay. Well, if you said it, it must be okay. Yeah, he doesn't even have to have the burden of proof. No, does not have to have that. It's our issue. The judge said is, oh, your issue is with the person you sold the house to. I said, no. The, the person we sold the house I'm to sorry, the person I'm sorry. we bought the house from? Our issue is with the person we bought the house from. Because we still own it. We own the house, but they're saying, well, she has all the money that he gave her. I go, she, he didn't give her money. She said, she said she didn't get any money. And he signed a document that's fraudulent. And he's like, yeah, well, it's insane. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. The liberal judges are, again, so here's what I want to do. I cannot wait. I would love to do this. If, in theory, if you went on vacation with your family for the weekend, and I think you should pay attention if you're online listening to this right now. If you went away on vacation with your family um, for a week and you came back and somebody was in your house, yeah, I think technically speaking, that's their house. Take it back in the house. What if you went on a 30 day vacation? If you right. went 30 day vacation, if you went to travel, we went to Europe a few years ago. Yeah. We were gone for almost a month. Yeah. If you did that and you came back or you were a snowbird and you left, 
you know, let's just, just say, I would love, I would love to go to the mayor or the supervisor, whoever is in the town, Schenectady, let's say this, the mayor of Schenectady. I would love to watch and stake out their house. And if they left for 30 days, just move my shit right in. <laughs> I would. I'd move it right in and say, yeah, you know, and then come back and say, who are you? Say, oh, this is my house now. Yeah. What, well, you don't like it? Well, I'm sorry. I I'm changed squatting. the locks. I'm squatting. Yeah. This is my house now. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I feel like saying. It's just, it's terrible. But <laughs> You're it, not getting riled up about this, oh, are you, baby? Oh, man, I just hate when they steal stuff from us, right? It's, it's just wrong. They steal, they steal houses from people. I would love to go to the mayor's house and do the same thing and just move in and say, oh, I'm sorry, according to your law, this is my house. So get out yeah. or get me out. And I'd love to see them try that. I bet you they have a very different take on what this hall means to people. Well, I mean, I guess the good news is that it's getting more publicized now, like even even that video we just watched and people are kind of banding together and saying, hey, this is a much bigger problem because, you know, there there are some laws that are created and with with the with the thought that it's going to make things better. But when you realize it's making it worse or people are taking advantage of that, then things need to change. So hopefully that's going to change. We are lucky enough that that can't happen to our house in the state of Florida. Because our I love wonderful our, governor, Ron DeSantis, just our governor. signed that bill saying that, you know, squatters don't have rights. I would love to Go play. Go DeSantis. Yeah, let me play this quick video for you so you understand why we love living yeah. in Florida. Because we haven't had a major squatter problem here yet. But just in case we did, watch what Ron had to say. Good evening and thank you for joining us. All 50 states have what are called squatters rights. That can make it very difficult to have someone removed from your own property. But That's how great. and when these laws are enforced varies by state. The Florida lawmakers have now passed a bill to make it easier to get rid of squatters. It's House Bill 621. It authorizes property owners to request action by the sheriff's office to immediately remove them from your home. The bill passed the Florida Senate last week. Tanner Stewart is in the studio to break down this new piece of legislation and how it impacts here locally. So Bob, before the bill was signed into law, squatters are considered tenants in the eyes of the law. Now squatters will soon face criminal charges for violating what was once within their rights. 39 yeas, your nays, Madam President. In a unanimous decision, the Florida Senate is making it easier for property owners to rid their areas of squatters. Senator Keith Perry led Thank the charge God. on House Bill 621 that allows property owners to file an affidavit showing the property doesn't belong to those who are occupying it. The bill creates stiff penalties for violators, like a second degree felony for damage to a home and first degree felony for fraudulently selling or leasing the property. The sheriff's required to serve the notice and remove unwanted occupants without delay. This is an important bill. If you see the stories of what happens, uh, it is egregious what these people are getting away with uh, through the current legislation. WEAR has covered several squatter ridden properties over the years, including this home on Lejeune Drive. It's since been cleaned up, but not before a months long battle in the courts. Pensacola City Councilwoman Jennifer Brayer helped find a solution here, but says the time it took was overwhelming. We still had to give them uh, notice that they were being evicted. They had to be given time. And that, I think, is shocking to the owners that someone is illegally within their home, and yet they have to still go through that process. So I can see how this, this new law would really aid um, people that are in that situation. Brer says this bill is long overdue for both property owners and residents living nearby. It was affecting their sense of security, their sense of well-being, their financial aspect. For people who have had someone overtake their home, the idea that they have to do do rights with a person that is essentially stealing their home is pretty overwhelming and shocking to them. The bill's now awaiting the governor's signature. And when it comes to squatters rights, the bill does allow for cause of action if someone is wrongfully removed from a property. Property owners can also face perjury charges for wrongfully filing the affidavit. In the studio, I'm Tanner Stewart. Thank goodness that somebody has some common sense and is that's justice. Like, like you are illegally in my house. Get the hell out. So, all right, this if you wonder why right now hedge funds like BlackRock and there's uh, several others, we we know people. We just recently met a guy that is buying what 30,000 houses a year. A year. I yep. think he slowed down last year, but he, they're they're on track for 30,000 in 2024. 30,000 houses. That's a gentleman that we met. And the hedge funds are trying to buy hundreds of thousands of single family homes. Do you notice they don't buy in the red states? There's a reason why they don't buy in California and no, New York. No, they don't buy in the blue states. I'm sorry. Yeah. There's a reason why I don't buy in the blue states. Yeah, yeah. that was I would get those two mixed up a lot, which I should not because I'm very strongly <laughs> in the red red state. 
uh, mindset. But yeah, they 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 will not buy in blue states because of these crazy ass laws. Yeah. And they, they're like, why should we deal with that? Because yeah, they're not landlord friendly states. It affects the bottom line of a landlord. Yeah. In our portfolio, all we have to have is one person like we have now not paying rent for six months and we lose 10, 20, $30,000. Yeah. That upsets that entire portfolio. Now yeah. I know people go, well, boo hoo. Well, boo hoo to you. Then go, then this is my retirement you're yeah. messing with. This is my family, my children. This is what I work for. And I, I take risk in buying properties and building a portfolio, not to have somebody come steal it from me. Right. It's the same thing as me going to your 401k and stealing from you. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, How would I mean. you like it's, that? It's just theft. It's like, just theft. Like any way you cut it, it's theft. I mean, I remember uh, during COVID, uh, I saw a guy post on Facebook, hey, interest rates are at an all-time low. Why don't you guys just stop paying rent and save that money up for a down payment on a house? That's how they like, think. Like screw the landlord in the process. Yeah. I don't know. Where, I don't know where good, good good values, values and human decency and just business sense and just just doing the right thing it seems like doing the right thing seems to be yeah, not popular these days you know it seems yeah. like just the, everyone on social media thinks it's cool to do the wrong thing and screw the man well the man is people like us and it's not even not, don't even say us people that have four or five properties right. or one property right and that's it, what they're depending on for their livelihood. There's, I know people that are 70, 80 years old. They get yes. rent from one apartment building or one house, and that's how they live their life. Yes. And if a person goes in and does that, it would literally, I said it before, imagine that I go into your 401k and I take out $1,500 a month every single solitary month. You say, stop. And I say, make me. Right. Well, no, stop. Make me. Right. The losses I can take this. What do you mean? the losses I can take it. It's my money now. And I just keep taking money from you. That's exactly what happens to landlords and business owners right. in this scenario. And I think it's, I think it's insanity. And I had this thought too. I haven't seen this online or in the news, but this is probably going to open up a can of worms, but we have all these it's illegal- It's going to piss me off again. Maybe. I'm, I'm already aggravated today. So we, we have all these Ill illegal immigrants coming into oh, the country get me and going with that. they don't have a place to live. So you got this Far left anti landlord activists posting mm -hmm. vacant houses. Where do you think they're going to go? Oh yeah. So you you know you want all these illegal immigrants next door to you? Yeah. That's because exactly, the house is yeah. vacant. Yeah. It, we it, we we have a vacant house two doors down from us. Yeah, we do. I don't want. Well, thank God we live in Florida. Thank God we live in Florida. So in Florida, we can get them out in a day yep. or two. That's it. Yep. We don't have to wait and go through the whole process. Yeah, our so. mayor wouldn't be putting up with that. Yeah. Well, we certainly had our share of squatter problems over the years and people that have been in our houses. Do you remember the guy, you know, speaking of, of the sales cycle. So we renovated the house in Rotterdam. The guy that was pissing in the, pissing yes. in the yard and, and bathing in the pool. Yes. yes. So the, the neighbors had called and the police called us and, and they were like, we think somebody's in the house. You, you actually went to the house. So you should tell the story because you did. were actually firsthand there. So we had a house finished. We were supposed to close like in a week or so. And we walked, we, and the police met me, the cook, they called me and said, are you the owner of this yeah. house? And I said, it was on Adams Street. I remember that. Yes. And they said, I said, uh, yeah, my company just flipped it. It's sold. But why? They said, because we believe we have somebody living there. I go, what? <laughs> what do you live in there? So I said, I'll meet you there. So I met them there. And I walked in the house with about six or eight officers. And these guys had their hands on their sidearm. I was unarmed because I'm in New York. Yeah. But I'm, I'm unarmed. And I'm, I'm walking along with them. And they went to the whole house. And they said, okay, we're clear. We're clear. We're clear. We're clear. And they said, oh, nice house. I said, great. And then they said, they said, any other buildings? I said, well, there's a garage out back. So they walk in the garage and there was nothing in the garage. And then suddenly I was talking to four of the police officers outside because our kids went to school together. I actually coached one of their kids in Little League. And we're just having a conversation. And I'll never forget, there was, there was two cops in the garage and they were making eye contact with the cops in the lawn. I remember him going like this and pointing up. He's going like this and he points up and he's pointing his eyes and he's looked up. I said, he, he said, I need you to get out of here. He looked at me and said, because when I was standing right by the garage door, he goes, I need you to leave. And I'm like, I realized I was the only guy without, without a, a weapon. <laughs> and I was like, I'm out of here. And I stepped back far enough to see there was a guy. So there was a, there was a hatch in the top of the roof. Like kind of like a little loft. And it was a hole there. Yeah. But when the garage door went up and the garage door goes at an angle, it was covering the hole. And so that guy was living up there. And the guy said, come down, come down. And he wouldn't come down, wouldn't come down. Finally, the one cop picked the other cop up. He put his head up and the guy's face was right in his face. He grabbed him by the hair, threw him on the ground. And then they wrestled him a little bit. He didn't wrestle too much, but they put him in cuffs and they marched him away. Yep. And he said, well, press charge. I said, absolutely. Get him out of here. I don't want so, that. So and the then, story was, the story was that that guy 
worked for our roofer. So he knew that the house was vacant. He was aware of that. And and he had had a fight with his girlfriend. His girlfriend kicked him out and he needed somewhere to live and yeah. somewhere to stay. So he chose our garage. He was pissing on the side of it. So the side of the it garage stunk. freaked like it was awful. Oh. And he was bathing in the swimming pool. That's an above ground swimming pool. And the neighbors saw him and thought it looked a little sketchy. So, yes. so yeah. that, that's why they called See him. Man. So, yeah. So that was crazy. But that, that you know. Looking back, he was there about two weeks. Yeah. The laws now, again, I don't know what the laws in New York. I feel like it's, you know, two weeks or it's. Well, that video, a lot of that video was in New York. Yeah. So, so it's, I, I believe it's 30 days. 30 days. Yeah. So if they're in the house for 30 days, if he had been there two more weeks, now this is going back a decade. So we didn't have, maybe the laws weren't as crazy back then. Everything got crazy during COVID and they wanted yeah. all these, you know, oh, we want to make sure everybody's taken care of and protected. And again, they don't care about us. They just care about the people that are yeah. that and, steal. And, and even during that, during the the rent moratorium, if people were out of jobs or whatever, they didn't give us any tax breaks on taxes. Not a bit. Like like we just had to suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They told people you don't have to pay rent. Yeah. And you can't move. And by the way, you have to keep paying your mortgage. Yeah. You can't evict people, and you have to keep paying your mortgage, no yeah. matter what. Your mortgage, even, your taxes, even if you're not getting rent, your insurance, the upkeep, everything. You have to keep. You have to be a model landlord to a not model tenant. You have to be a, a model landlord to an illegal tenant. Yeah. That's exactly so somebody what- Somebody stealing from you. That's exactly what being a squatter is. Yeah. A model landlord to an illegal squatter. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I don't know. I'm just glad that we live in Florida now. I know that we're not going to buy any more rental properties in New York. Yeah. We uh, bought our last eight unit up there and we're going to be done with that. Unless we have a killer deal that comes along. But for the most part, it's very difficult to build a rental portfolio. So now we're going to be expanding down to the Florida area. And looking maybe in some Tennessee and some other other states that are a lot more landlord My home friendly. My state of Texas. Yep, Texas. We might look at that as well. So, but but the good news is that it does seem like there's uh, more awareness around this topic now. So hopefully some positive changes will come out of it. Yeah. At least in in the red states they will. Well, people should just be aware of it. And if you live in a blue state, you should be very aware of what the laws are for squatters. And I think one of the ways you can probably prevent it is to make sure that you monitor that property. If you yeah. have a vacant property. I would put cameras on it. Yes. I would put motion sensors on it. I'd put an alarm system in it and I'd pay for Wi-Fi so you can tie the alarm system to the Wi-Fi and the cameras to the Wi-Fi. 100%. And the minute you see somebody in that house, get them out. That's how we got those people out that moved in their whole family yep. in a weekend because we, someone saw it, you know, we, we went there to check on the house and we saw it and we got them out. They weren't stuck there for 30 yeah, days. Yeah. So there, there's something to be said for being really proactive and, and you have to be and protecting your investment. And I don't care if you have a junky house or a be- people think yeah. I think people think squatters are just going to be in junky houses. No, like, there oh, was that big story of the the lady in uh, California that was at the Airbnb that wouldn't leave for months. I didn't see that. I, I, that was a few months back, but I remember that being like all in the news. But but yeah, same same scenario. Be- was it a beautiful home? Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly right. So people, you know, it doesn't matter the kind of home. So if you have a vacant home, if you travel for six months. You damn well better have an alarm and cameras. have cameras in that house. It doesn't cost, it's well worth the investment to spend a few hundred bucks to put an yep. alarm in, spend 20 bucks a month to have it monitored. And meet your neighbors and, you know, they can keep an eye out for you too. Well, They'll, I you know, wouldn't even anything. trust them. Well, I wouldn't either. I'd still do the camera thing, but, you know, yeah. the more eyes, the better. Yeah. So, well, because if you, if you normally have an Airbnb, there's people your coming neighbors and going wouldn't, anyway. your neighbors wouldn't know if you're doing right. anything. So you have to be very careful. But again, someone can move in that house and not move out and then you're just in trouble. Right. So, well. I'd be cautious about it. Certainly, it's uh, something that really riles me up and gets my feathers all going because I just- it's I, just so unfair. It just, it's just wrong. I just it's don't- wrong. I don't believe in theft. I don't believe in dishonesty. Yeah. I don't believe in any of that stuff. So I wasn't raised that way. And this is pure theft. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you cut it, no matter how you paint it, you can paint it with your liberal brush all you want and say, well, we're helping people that are- well, they can't call them homeless now because that's offensive to homeless people. <laughs> what do they, call, makes them? These what do they stupid... call them now? Oh, they call them- People uh, without homes? Yeah, they call them people that are d- displaced. <laughs> Nomads? You know, no, there's a word for it. There's a word now for people that are homeless. You can't say homeless anymore. Are you freaking kidding me? No, and you can't say illegal alien, right? That's illegal because Biden just had his State of the Union and he called them illegal aliens. He got in big trouble for that. They have to call them displaced humans or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, and you can't you can't call people that's homeless because that, homeless good as is offensive person. to people. Yeah, it's, oh my yeah, word. Yeah, the the left don't even get me going on how how insane they are right I now. I haven't even so, heard that. That's God, insane. I hope our country gets back to some some sanity someday soon. Some values. Oh, they're missing values. So, all right, with that, I think we should wrap this episode up because I could just get my blood pressure. <laughs> I could have a heart attack right live on this episode. We don't want that to happen. Please don't. So, so remember, 
be careful your properties. If you have a vacant property, be vigilant. If you're flipping houses, be vigilant about making sure that no one is there, especially during the sales cycle yeah. that might take 30 or 60 days to close a house at the end, or when you first own it and you don't start renovations yet. Right. You've got to make sure that it's protected. So you should drive by that thing or have somebody looking at that every single day to make sure nothing fishy is going on to protect yourself in the future. So great advice. Protect yourself in the blue states, in the red states. You get to get them out as soon as you see them. So choose your poison, whatever you want to do. That concludes this episode of the Fearless Future podcast. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click that like button and don't miss out on any future content. So make sure you hit subscribe and turn on those notifications.